Okay, so welcome back. In this part, we are going to be creating the functionality that allows the user to change their password. Um, so the reason I've got the register uh, page open that we did earlier in the series is because um, we're going to take some um, aspects of this and apply it to the change password uh, page. Essentially, all we're going to have is a form. The user is going to be able to enter their current password for security, just in case they've left their account logged on. Um, their new password and the new password uh, repeated. Uh, we're going to process that in more or less exactly the same way as we've done on the register page. So we are uh, checking if the data has been posted. Uh, we're setting the required fields, which will be all of them. Um, and then we're going to, you know, uh, check if they're empty, blah, 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 things like that. Uh, and then obviously if there's any errors we're going to output them uh, if the if it's successful we're going to call a change password function change the user's password and redirect them to a success page uh, like we did just down here so if is set success uh, you've been registered successfully we'll just say you know we've changed your password and everything like that okay so um, we'll keep register.php open in case we need to refer back to it but let's go ahead and create a new file uh, and uh, just go ahead and create some PHP tags. Save this as change password.php uh, in our root directory. So we're going to be linking to this. So over here, um, this change password link will go to change password.php. We've just created it, there's nothing on there. Uh, so we'll need to go ahead and copy over a template. So I'm just going to go over to the index page and copy this over. And I'm just going to say change password uh, and I'll get rid of that paragraph there now before we do anything else we need to take into account the fact that users that aren't logged in obviously there's no point in them being able to access this page so we need to protect this page against uh, users that aren't logged in so I'm going to use the protect page function that we created in the last part um, and let's go ahead and check this out so um, let's go ahead and click change password we've got this page uh, let's log out and just uh, check this there we go, so perfect. Uh, I'll go ahead and log back in and uh, let's start working on this. So the first thing we're going to work on is the form, obviously. Uh, we need to uh, create a form, the ability to submit the data, and then we'll go through all the necessary checks. Uh, so let's go ahead and start to build the form, not the from. So the action is the current page. We're going to be posting the data to this page to have it checked. The method's going to be post. Uh, we're going to create an unordered list again, much like we did for the um, last uh, for the registration form. So we need three of these. And inside of here, what do we need? Well, we need the current password. So I'm going to say current password. I'm just going to place an asterisk before that. Uh, line breakdown to the field. So input type. This is going to be now we can obviously either type in text or password. I'm going to be choosing the password uh, field. In fact, I'm going to be choosing the text field for now, just so we can see what we're entering into the forms for the purpose of the tutorial. But when it comes to actually applying this to your site, you're going to want to change this to password. And I'll be doing that at the end anyway. Um, hopefully I don't forget. So uh, the type is pass uh, the type is text, sorry. And the name of this is just going to be current underscore password. Let's go down and do the same thing here. And let's just change this. So we're just copying and pasting to be a bit more efficient. Uh, in fact, we'll just call this password. We won't call the field new password. It just makes it longer. Um, and then new password again. And I'll just say password underscore again. Okay, so now we have um, a field here, a form here, sorry, current password, new password, and new password again. Uh, let's just go ahead and pop a submit button in here, uh, and then that will be the end of it. So the input type is submit. The value is going to be change password. Makes sense. Okay, so this is our form. Um, at the moment, like I said, we can see any data that we're entering into here, uh, which is fine. Um, now, let's go ahead and, and submit this through uh, and, and uh, start to validate the fields. Uh, so the validation is probably the most trickiest part. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you're validating your password the same way that you're validating your passwords on your register.php uh, file, your registration page. 
Um, obviously, the reason being is that you know we've got here that the uh, the string length of the password must be at least six. So we have to have at least six characters in the password. If then when you ask the user to enter a new password, you don't do this. You know, you're, it's pointless even allowing them to do this in the first place. So if you want the user to change the password, you need to take into account that you know you need to apply the same rules here. Uh, or here as you have done here um, obviously it's bad it's probably you know not great that we're doing this twice and sort of duplicating this functionality over we might have a say a global function that allows us to check password strength and then return um, whether it's okay or not and then you know but you know we'll do it in this way and then that's something to come later I guess okay so um, we've got this now what do we want to do well up here we want to go ahead and start to check everything. In fact, we need to want we need to do it just here. Um, so we're first of all going to say if empty post is equal to false. So has the data been posted? Let's just go ahead and echo a out just so we know that everything's working. Click on there. A has been echoed, so that's fine. We know that the form's submitting and that we're we, you know we're checking the data. Now we're going to define some required fields. So we're going to do exactly as we did here. In fact, I'm just going to copy it and paste it. it makes it a lot easier. So required fields equals array, and we have an array of required fields. Now, which fields are required here? All of them. So let's go ahead and say current password password and password again. Now you might be thinking, well, if they're all required, why can't we just do one big check to check that all the form fields are required? Well, you never know. You might later on want to add another field that isn't required. For example, why are you changing your password? And the user might be able to give optional text as to why they're changing it. You know, anything like that. That's that's an example. But um, so we're doing this now, so we can later on makes us easier, e makes it easier for us. So now we need to do what we've done here. Uh, in this for each loop and we need to check um, uh, whether you know the form fields that we specified are required so again I'm just going to be a bit lazy and paste this in but let me just go over it again just in case you you forgot or you need a refresher so for every item that we post ie current password password and pass again as key value now key is the uh, array key so um, or, or, or the the name of this so this key in the first loop will be current password in the second loop it will be password and the value is the actual value that the user has entered into this text field um, if it's empty so I if they haven't entered anything in the specific field and it's in array uh, it, if it's in the array that's required then um, you know they haven't entered one field then we break because we you know the first instance of not finding something we need to throw an error um, so that's basically it for that um, let's go ahead and just check this out. So I'm going to go ahead and print R errors. And another reminder, just remember that inside of our core init folder, we've got this defined already because we're using it on, on uh, you know, we're going to be using it on lots of pages. So um, we define it up there so we don't need to do it again and again in each page. So print R errors, that's just going to print an, uh, the, the array that we're storing uh, of errors. So if I click change password, Fields marked with an asterisk are required. If I go ahead and type A, A, and A, change password, no errors. So we know that that works now. Perfect. So let's go ahead and do the rest of our validation. Uh, it's not too too tricky, um, but let's go ahead and, and make a start. So we first of all now want to make sure that the password and the password again match. Okay. We obviously want to check if the um, actually yeah we'll probably do whether the current password is correct. So let's go ahead and do that. So if now we need to check whether the current password that the users entered matches the current password that they're actually using. So where do we get this data from? Well, if you remember inside of core and init, we called our user data function and we passed through all of the data that we wanted to grab from the user and we allowed access to this and we get access to this using user underscore data, this variable just here. And then we, uh, because it's an array that we're storing, we just choose there what we want. So how do we take advantage of this and use it inside of here? Well, in fact, let's go ahead and get rid of this if statement and just echo user data password. 
and this will be the password that's stored in the database so there we go we've got this being echoed out now this is the md5 hash of the password uh, that i'm using which is just password um, so we can use this to check the user um, has you know into the correct current password so what we need to do is we need to encrypt the password that they type in and compare it to the encrypted password in our database so if md5 of what we encrypting will dollar underscore post current password um, is equal to or sorry is not equal to um, user data password so we're encrypting the current password that the user has entered in the field and we're comparing that to the encrypted password so they're both being encrypted so therefore we will get a match if both of the plain texts uh, match up um, so if uh, they do match do something otherwise we need to store an error here so errors equals um, your current password is in correct correct there we go okay so otherwise we want to do something else I'm going to just echo um, fine for example okay so let's go ahead and uh, refresh this now I'm going to go ahead and enter my current password uh, incorrectly which is I'm just going to type Apple a new password I'm just going to type anything because otherwise we'll get an error returned so um, change password uh, fine it says here oh that's wrong uh, let's go ahead and check what's going on here so if md5 oh sorry is equal to right okay so let's start again if it's equal to the current password then that's fine otherwise if it's not equal to we uh, append an error to that that array so apple a a change password your current password is incorrect brilliant that's what we wanted now my actual password is just password so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to um click change password now with the correct current password in and we've got no errors and we just echo fine out so we've done this first check and we've gone along to make sure that you know that's right that's fine perfect now within this uh, block here we want to go ahead and do some further checks so this will be that the two new passwords match up correctly that the two new passwords are both uh, greater than um, you know, six characters blah 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 things like that so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that they match and we'll be doing that in the next part of this short um, change password uh, part of the series um, simply because we've run over time so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that in the next part